Have you ever found yourself stuck trying to compare values in a data frame with a list, only to be met with unexpected results? It can be really frustrating, right? If that's you, then you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into how to properly compare data frame column values with a list in Python. I totally get it. You write your code, expecting it to work perfectly, but then you see results that just don't make sense. You're not alone in this. Many people face similar challenges when working with data frames in Python. Here's the specific situation we're looking at. One user recently asked, why is my new column not showing the expected values when comparing with a list? They provided a data frame and the code they used, but the output was not what they anticipated. Sound familiar? Let's dig into this together and find a solution. So what could be causing this issue? The problem often lies in how we apply functions to data frame columns. We'll break it down step by step so you can understand what's going wrong and how to fix it. And don't go anywhere. I've got a crucial tip at the end that will help you avoid this issue in the future. To address the user's issue, we first need to understand why the current solution is not working. The user is trying to create a new column based on whether the values in column C are present in the first series. The problem arises because the user is using the apply function with a lambda that checks for membership in the first series. However, the first series is a panda series and the comparison needs to be done correctly. To fix this, the user can convert the first series to a set. This will allow for a more efficient membership test. Let's update the code accordingly. After making these changes, the user should see the correct output in column D, where it will show one for the first occurrences and zero for others. In summary, by converting the first series to a set, the user can efficiently check for membership and achieve the desired results in the new column. Fun fact, did you know that pandas is named after the animal, not the black and white bear? It's a playful nod to the data analysis library's ability to handle large data sets with ease. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative solution provided by another user suggests using the NumPy where function along with pandas ISIN method. This approach allows you to create a new column in your data frame that indicates whether the values in column C are present in the first list. This method is efficient and concise, returning one if the condition is true and zero if false. It also allows for more complex conditions using bitwise operators. Let's take a look at an answer from another user. An alternative solution provided by another user suggests using the transform method for a more efficient approach. They recommend applying the transform function to group by column A and retrieve the first value of column C. This method allows you to compare directly with the original column C in one step. The transform method returns a vector of the same length as the original data frame, making it easy to create the new column D, which indicates whether each value in column C is the first in its group. That's it for that response. Let's explore another one. An alternative solution provided by a user suggests that the issue arises because first is a pandas series. When using in to check for values, it searches the index instead of the values. To fix this, they recommend converting first to a list or an array. They also provide a more efficient method using the map function, which significantly reduces execution time. Here's the crucial tip I promised. Always convert lists to sets when performing membership tests in Python. This can significantly improve performance and avoid unexpected results. And there you have it. Your new column should now reflect the correct values. Remember, understanding how to manipulate data frames is key to successful data analysis. If you found this helpful, hit the subscribe button for more tips and don't miss our next video on advanced data frame techniques.